Good morning. How are you? Uh, today we're going to finish up the phrase, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Last week we did uh, a talk about what is repentance and we used two particular words, teshuva and metanaya'o. And today we're going to talk about forgiveness because repentance and forgiveness go hand in hand, don't they? So I have uh, three movements that I'd like to invite you in. Now, here we go. It goes like this. 13.7, then fixed, then bold faith. Are you ready? Because we're going to do this. According to the scientists, and a lot of you have been learning about this in school, or at least before COVID shut down school, the universe is 13.7 billion years old. And some people might be intimidated by that number. It's kind of hard to conceive 13.7 billion. However, to me, I find it rather quite beautiful because to me, it says, the universe is still blossoming. I like that. And it also gives me a different understanding. God is actually still active in the birth of new stars, new galaxies, there could be new species popping up at all times, and there's even new babies being born. It's like the universe is still blossoming like a flower. Isn't that great? So why, what, what does that have to do with forgiveness? Well, I, I, thank you for asking. That's a great question. Well, some of us have a fixed mindset towards the universe, that we think this is it, this is how it is, and it's a closed construct of Newtonian physics, you probably learned about that at school too, of a closed system of cause and effect. But things and parts and pieces are what they are and nothing can change. Well, fixed mindsets aren't particularly Christian. To be a Christian and to actually be a church-going person, especially a follower of Jesus, means that you actually have what's called a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. And I found this really interesting graphic online that talks about here are some of the common thoughts of someone with a fixed mindset and here are some of the common thoughts of a person with a growth mindset. Here we go. A fixed mindset person will say, failure is the limit of my abilities. I'm either good at it or I'm not. My abilities are unchanging. I can either do it or can't. I don't like to be challenged. That's a fixed mindset. My potential is predetermined. When I'm frustrated, I give up. Feedback and criticism are personal. I stick to what I know. On the other side, though, is a growth mindset. And someone with a growth mindset says this, failure is an opportunity to grow. I can learn to do anything I want Challenges help me to grow. My effort and attitude determine my abilities. Feedback is constructive. I am inspired by the success of others and I like to try new things. Now, follow with me for just a moment. Imagine if the universe itself had a fixed mindset of no more growth, no learning, nothing new ever coming onto the scene versus a growth mindset and a world that says possibilities are happening. We can always grow, we can always learn. Failure is not the end. I really like this understanding and I want to say it was probably Bono from the band U2 who said to be a Christian means that you commit to constantly changing. That you have to have a growth mindset towards yourself. And that also means you actually have to have a growth mindset to other people. So talking about forgiveness, all of us have to learn how to forgive other people because we can't give in to the diabolical or the demonic mindset of saying that person is canceled. That person can't grow. They've made mistakes that are too big, gone. As if that person doesn't have the ability to grow. It's important to have a growth mindset towards us, but it's important to have a growth mindset towards others. And forgiveness helps us to break out of having a fixed mindset for other people. 
I found out in the past week or so that there are a number of Instagram accounts for the local schools where people have been uploading pictures of other people's TikToks and Snapchats and other things that are racist. And on one level, that might seem positive because you're exposing racism as it is, because racism is absolutely evil and inherently anti-Christian. Because, well, Christian love always elevates and unites. Anything that divides people is inherently evil. So to have these accounts that try to shine a light on racism like that, it, it's, it's like halfway there, it's halfway good, but the problem I have with it is that it still assumes a fixed mindset towards other people, that they can't grow, that they can't learn, as if that whole person deserves to be canceled. You might have even heard that term right now. There's a whole bunch of celebrities occasionally being canceled by the next group of people. Well, it's not Christian to not have a growth mindset. So this brings me to my last point, and this has to do with bold faith. You have to, young people, listen very carefully, seriously. Please have faith in humanity. I mean that, sincerely. And there's even good Christian reason for it. To believe in Jesus means that you also believe in humanity because Jesus was a member of the human race. But beyond that, to believe in Jesus also presupposes that you believe that people can be like him and that people aren't fixed in their static way of being not like Jesus, that people can grow into it. So actually to be a Christian means that you have faith in people, an unwavering positivity towards humanity. You're not allowed to despair towards humanity as a Christian because all of us have the ability to continue growing in what some high fluting people like to use the word sanctification, but you can also just say holiness. Young people, please forgive people around you. Forgive your parents. Good God, they're trying to do the best that they can with the skill sets that they have, with the tools that they have. Please assume a, a growth mindset towards them. Assume a growth mindset towards your friends. Assume a growth mindset towards even the church. I believe that the church right now maybe needs to ask for some forgiveness for not doing what it should, which is pointing towards truth and justice. Matthew 23 talks about how it's possible to be very, very religious, yet you mistake or you forget the weightier matters of the law, which are justice and mercy and faith. Don't give up on the church, please. Forgive it for not being perfect. Don't despair of it, but instead do what this amazing Lord's Prayer says to do, is forgive others their debts. There's a, a fantastic song and I'm gonna close with this. I'm gonna ask that you imagine a new reality. One of my favorite bands, Me Without You, is from the Philly area and they have a song called Bullet to Binary Part Two. And it's a sequel to a previous song, but this sequel is like kind of folkish. And it finishes with, why not forgive everyone, everywhere, everything? And that's how it finishes. It just repeats that on like endless loop. Like row, row, row your boat. Why not? Let's forgive everyone, everywhere, everything. What do you think this world could blossom into if we stopped having a static or fixed mindset towards ourselves or others and just learn how to forgive absolutely freely? I can't imagine where our world could end up if we did that. So give it a try. But more than that, make it a habit that you maintain the rest of your life. Grace and peace to all of you. Be well.